Welcome to the District 5150 Grant Management Training for Club Qualification for the Rotary Year 2021-2022. There are three modules in this course. Part 1, Annual Fund and District Designated Funds. Part 2, District Designated Funds. Part 3, District Grants. When you complete this course, you will satisfy the Club Qualification Requirement Number 3. Thank you and enjoy the course. Greetings Rotarians and welcome to the District 5150 Grant Management course on the annual fund share and its relationship to district designated funds. I'm Jane Hulbert, District 5150 Rotary Foundation Committee Chair. The Rotary Foundation of Rotary International has several different funds. Polio Plus Fund for the eradication of polio, the Endowment Fund, investing funds for the future use of Rotary, Disaster Response Fund, the World Fund, and today we'll be discussing the Annual Fund. Specifically, we'll talk about the Annual Fund share, the portion of the Annual Fund that is shared with our district. Annually, District 5150 conducts a fundraising campaign for the Annual Fund share, known as the Every Rotarian Every Year campaign, also known as E-Ray. The reason for this fundraising campaign is specifically to ask each Rotarian to donate at least $25 to the annual fund share. We're looking for a commitment from our Rotarians and for them to understand where that money goes. The annual fund share is critical to the funding success of district and global grants. Half of the money we donated to the annual fund share just three years ago comes back to our district. Let's take a look at what happens to your donation to the annual fund share. When a donation is made to the annual fund share, it is invested for three years. Its growth supports the Rotary Foundation's operations. After three years, the funds are shared between the World Fund and DDF. That's why the word share is so important when you donate to the annual fund share. Half of the money goes to the World Fund, which funds global grants and programs such as Polio Plus, Rotary Peace Centers, and the Endowment Fund. The other half of the donation is returned to District 5150 in the form of District Designated Funds, or DDF. And DDF can be used for district grants and global grants. Remember, you can use your DDF to any of these or a combination of district and global grants, Polio Plus, Peace Centers, Endowment Fund, or the Disaster Fund. This chart shows donations to the annual fund share and the generation of district designated funds. The blue line, which is the top line, represents the annual fund share donations from our members. The orange or the red line is the district designated funds that have been returned to our district as a result of the donations to the annual fund share. From 2008 to 2015, our district contributed about $321,000 annually, which was pretty consistent for, the, for that period. For that same period, our district designated funds was about $170,000, which for a small Rotary district is pretty impressive. In the year 2016-17, our district changed the policy regarding the allocation of district designated funds. Prior to that, DDF was controlled at the district level. The question that was asked by district leadership was, where do these annual fund contributions come from that generate DDF? The answer is that annual fund donations come from Rotarians in our district. The policy was changed then, and DDF is now returned to clubs based on a pro rata share of their immediate past three years giving to the annual fund share. No DDF are held at the district level. 
We are one of the few districts in the world that distributes DDF recognizing clubs donations to the annual fund share. We thought if people understand that the DDF is under the club's control, the club's level of contributions to the annual fund contributions would increase. Now look what happened after the policy was changed. In 2016-17, Rotarians donated a total of $574,000 compared to the typical donation of $312,000, a huge increase. The next two years saw the donations increase to $523,000 and $585,000. As a result of the increased donations to the annual fund share, our DDF was $302,000 you can see that the relationship between the annual fund is much, much higher than the first years in this chart. I ask you to remember only one thing from this session. Remember the relationship between the annual fund share and district designated funds. Remember that DDF is returned to clubs based on a pro rata share of the club's immediate past three year giving to the annual fund share. The message is simple. The more your members contribute to the annual fund share, the more district designated funds your club will have to do great projects in your community and around the world. Now it's time to test your knowledge on the annual fund share and DDF. Question one, why is the annual fund share so important and why is there the annual E-Ray campaign? A, annual fund share donations do not generate district designated funds. B, annual fund share donations generate district designated funds. C, E-Ray is the fundraising campaign for the annual fund share. And the correct answers are B and C. Question two. When do half of the annual fund share donations return to District 5150 clubs? A, the year after the donations are made. B, three years after the donations are made. C, the funds are never returned. Or D, 10 years after the donations are made. The correct answer is B. Question three. Where do annual fund share donations come from? A, Rotarians, B, family, C, friends, D, all of the above. And the correct answer is D. Question four, what were the important DDF policy changes made in 2016, 2017? <coughs> A, all DDF are returned to clubs proportionately to what the clubs donated over the last three years. B, no DDF are retained at the district. C, clubs determine the use of their allocated DDF. D, all of the above. And the correct answer is D. And our last question, what is E-Ray? Even Rosa envies Yolanda, Ezra really enjoys yogurt, Eunice rarely emailed Yuri, or every Rotarian every year? And the correct answer, of course, is D. Thank you very much for your contributions to the annual fund share, and thank you so much for doing good in the world. This is Dave Hellman, your District 5150 Grants Committee Chair. The purpose of this video presentation is twofold. First, to describe how district designated funds, and we use the acronym DDF, and that will be used throughout this presentation, is allocated to the clubs in our district. Second purpose is to show how the clubs tell the district how they want to use their DDF. Periodically, I email to the clubs a district designated funds spreadsheet 
this one is a sample and it is not specifically the type that goes out to the clubs during the year, but this particular one is a projection for the president elects for their coming rotary year so that they can see how much to plan for use of their DDF. And we're gonna talk in a while about how that DDF can be used. So normally the spreadsheet during the rotary year is sent out to the presidents and the international chairs, along with the DDF allocation form, which we'll get to a little later in this presentation. Um, and the purpose of sending this out is to show the clubs how much DDF they have used so far during the rotary year and to show what they have left available to use. Now, if they don't use it by March 1st, then the district grants committee will reallocate that DDF to another club or, or clubs in a district that needs some DDF to finish up their global grant project. So let's go specifically and look at this spreadsheet for the one club, a little broader, bigger print so that we can all see the numbers. Uh, we're using the first club on the spreadsheet, which is Belmont Redwood Shores. Now the way this allocation is done is we take prior three years of contributions to the share fund at the Rotary Fund International um, and take that percentage and calculate a percentage for the club. Now here's what Belmont Redwood Shores has done. For the Rotary year 2018-2019, their contribution to the share fund was $6,245. And that's in column C. In column D, the 2019-2020 share contribution was 5,215. In column E, it's showing that the 2020-21 shares, so that's from July 1st through, in this case, January 16th of 2021, has been $5,585. So those numbers are added up. They are compared to the total for all the clubs in the district. And then this percentage is calculated. And in this case, for Belmont Redwood Shores, it's 1.299937% is shown in column F. Now this number will change during the year. We've got almost six more months of this rotary year left to use uh, because some clubs have their fundraisers in the spring. Um, others make extra efforts to get contributions into the foundation during this time period. So there's no guarantee that this is gonna be the, the percentage that will stay for the rest and go into the next rotary year but it is a projection and hopefully fairly close to what the club will have available. So by taking that percentage, 1.299937, and multiplying it by the total DDF available for the year, 2021-2022, which is $317,270.80, we come up with the amount in column G, which is $4,111.32. Now, if this were a new club and that's for purposes of the district considers one that's been formed within the last three years, then the district policy is to give each new club at least $500 of DDF. So the way that's calculated is to the extent that the new club's funding and percentage coming up, so in other words, what they have in column G is less than $500, then the district makes up that difference so it is $500. In column I, this is a combination of two different potential sources of, of funding. Uh, first is for DD, uh, excuse me, for district grants that were not completed uh, and the funding was returned to the Rotary Foundation. So that goes back through me uh, to the foundation and uh, so that it is credited the following Rotary year. The second is that if there is a global grant that uh, doesn't come to fruition because it's just not done and it's canceled, then any DDF allocated by the club to that global grant is returned again the following rotary year. So in this case, Belmont Redwood Shores had neither of those, so there's nothing in that box. Um, and so we add up columns G, H, and I in column J, and it's $4,111.32. Now we'll move down to the next row and look at column K. 
Now, this is an allocation, a hypothetical allocation for a global scholar. And it's there in case uh, the president elects at a pre-PETS meeting approve a global scholarship for the district. Now, we have historically done that for many years. Um, and the way this is calculated is that we take the percentage that is up in column F, multiply it by the $17,500 cost for Global Scholar. And so Belmont Redwood Shores share of that is $227.49. So then column L reflects what's available then after an allocation of the Global Scholar for district grants and global grants. So in this case, it's $3,883.83. So over the course of the year, then the amounts, if any, is going for a district grant that we put in column M, then there's a subtraction of M from L, and that's what's in column N. Um, then column O is what's used for what we say is global grants, but it's also for Polio Plus and for any of the other funds that is going to be allocated, and we're going to go over that in a little more detail in a moment. So then column P again is another subtraction of column O from column N. And of course, since nothing's been allocated so far and they can't be until July 1st, then all these are the same number going across. Column Q is a description of the global grant or could be Polio Plus or one of the other funds. Um, if it is a global grant, the global grant number goes in column R. Um, column S is the amount that is used for that particular global grant project and the column T status is normally list of the lead club for the project, um, either in our district or somewhere else. Now, if it's for Polio Plus, then this will say district to notify TRF and that's just a reminder to me to do that. Um, to the extent that the club has four or five uh, different global grant projects during the year or allocations to polio or whatever it is, then there would be four or five rows here, one for each particular allocation for the global grant or for polio plus, um, so that they're all shown separately. So what do we use DDF for? Well, as said, we go for um, Rotary Scholars. We use it for global grants. We use it for district grants, can be used for Polio Plus, can be used for the Foundation's Disaster Response Fund, for Rotary Peace Centers, Rotary Endowment Fund, and there's also some other specific funds, and you can also use them for a specific global grant. So how is this matched, if at all, by the Rotary Foundation? So, what happens is three years after we have made a contribution of a share fund, uh, the district gets 50% of that contribution back, and that's what we call DDF. We allocate it as we just showed you how we allocate that through the spreadsheet. Now, what happens is that to the extent the clubs make an allocation for a global grant, Polio Plus, the Disaster Response Fund, for Peace Center, for the Endowment Fund, those are matched dollar for dollar. So essentially that 50% that we got back is matched with another 50%. So the clubs are really getting back 100% of what they put into the share fund to use for these types of projects. Now what's missing from here are district grants because district grants do not get that match. So the 50% is used by the club and it's not matched, but some clubs prefer to do that and they want to use their their funds for that specific purpose. Now the deadlines for allocating funds come in the three different categories. First, Global Scholars, they are approved at a pre-PETS meeting and that'll happen in the next month, within the next month before PETS. Um, district Grants, this is an online application that has to be submitted by June 1st. Uh, the reason for the June 1st date is because the district is allowed to make only one application to the Rotary Foundation every year for district grant funding. 
the maximum funding can be 50% of the total DDF. So of $317,270.80, we can get half of that for district grants. Now, if we end up with more than 50% applied for, then we have to um, reallocate the application funds so that we can't go over that 50% and there is a process. So what happens is since we want to do our district grant application to the foundation early on as possible in the rotary year, which is somewhere in July if possible, then we want to be able to show um, the clubs how much they're going to have and also get the application in on time. So a June 1st deadline, which is before the PE becomes president, but you have to submit it at that point, allows Cindy Sims, our district grants coordinator, the opportunity to check the application, see if they are correct or if additional information is needed, or if we have to make some reallocations because we were over requested gives time for all of those things so that early in July, we hopefully are in a position to go ahead and make the application for the Rotary Foundation to get the district grant funding. Um, the third area is for transfers for any of these types of grants, global grants, polio plus, disaster response funds, peace centers, the endowment fund. So those can be done at any time during the Rotary year with the applicant transfer form, which is coming up next, um, but it has to be done by March 1st or the district grants committee will do the reallocation. Now here's what the transfer form looks like. And this is in two slides, but it's actually a one page form. So, and, uh, and we do submit this out with, as I said earlier to the club presidents and international chairs every time we send out the spreadsheet, the DDF spreadsheet. It is a PDF form, but it's fillable, so it makes it easy to use, and hopefully uh, clubs will be aware of it and doing it regularly instead of uh, waiting all for the last minute. But first line, you fill in your club's name. Next box is how much you're transferring for a global grant, um, or polio comes later in the form, as we'll see. But this part is for global grants, you put in the grant number, name of the project, the country where the project's located, the host club or host district number and name. Um, the amount that's going in again is either representing all of the DDF or just a portion of it. Then if you also or alternatively only want to designate for polio plus or one of the other things, then these lines following that are used for those numbers. Um, the next page uh, which is the bottom actually of the page is where the club president signs and dates it and the international World community service chair has to also sign and date now there's a statement right above the signatures again reminding everybody that you have to get this in by march 1st or the district grants committee is going to do that reallocation for you so um, if you have any further questions we are going to have some webinars uh, that'll provide the opportunity for you to uh, ask those questions and to see the three videos that are part of this grant management training for the district. Or you can contact me directly at the email address or phone number that's listed there. Thank you for participating and listening to this video. Hi, this is Cindy Sims. I am the District 5150 District Grants Coordinator and a proud member of the Rotary Club of Foster City. We will be learning about what district grants are, how to apply for a district grant, and what to do after your club receives a district grant. Let's begin. First, where can you find information about district grants on the District 5150 website? Well, you go to our website, you click on About Rotary, scroll down to the Rotary Foundation, over at, scroll down to Rotary Grants, over to District Grants, and then to District Grants Overview. And that will open steps one through five 
on district grants. So the first step is a welcome. Where does district grant funding come from? District designated funds provide funding for district grants and global grants. Each club is allocated DDF annually by District 5150 based on the club's prior three years of donations to the Rotary Foundation's annual fund. Estimated DDF allocations for the coming Rotary year are sent to club presidents and president-elects by the end of March each year. What is the difference between a district grant and global grant? Well, global grants support large international projects with long-term sustainable outcomes in one or more of Rotary's areas of focus. While it's possible for the project to be completed within a single Rotary year, typically a global grant spans several years, depending on the size and scope. Global grants range from $30,000 to $400,000. Your club as lead club is responsible for securing the funding to access the global grant program. The Rotary Foundation will match an approved global grant project, $1 for $1 of DDF allocated to the project. The minimum budget for a global grant is $30,000 and global grants are administered by the Rotary Foundation. District grants, on the other hand, fund smaller scale, short-term projects that address immediate needs in your community or internationally. These grants are usually completed within a Rotary year and are easier to obtain than global grants with fewer restrictions and requirements. District grants are administered by the District 5150 District Grants Committee. So what can a district grant be used for? A district grant can be used to fund local community or international humanitarian projects in the areas of youth, elderly, literacy, or community, or Rotary International's seven areas of focus, peace and conflict pre prevention resolution, disease prevention and treatment, water and sanitation, maternal and child health, basic education and literacy, economic and community development, and new supporting the environment. What are some examples of district grant projects in District 5150? Well, there are community projects, teacher mini grants, RILA scholarships, community food banks, Rotary Park improvement, Rotacare, solar car project, Thanksgiving dinners for low-income families, a bay cruise and movie for low-income children with disabilities, dictionary distribution for third graders, COVID-19 masks distribution, community needs-based scholarships, furnishings for the Center for Domestic Peace, the SPARC program, hams for single moms, and international projects like H2 Open Doors, water purification projects, sanitary products for girls in Uganda, the Yurok Nation playground installation, which you will hear more about shortly. Can you use your club's DDF for more than one district grant project? Yes, you just need to complete a district grant application for each project. What can a district grant not be used for? Well, a district grant cannot be used for unrestricted cash donations to a beneficiary or cooperating organization. It cannot be used for operating, administrative, or indirect program expenses of another organization. A district grant cannot be used for matching funds for any other project. It cannot be used for reimbursement for previously completed projects. A district grant cannot be used to purchase land or buildings or construct or rehabilitate buildings except for water and sanitation projects. And a district grant cannot be used for fundraising activities and expenses related to Rotary events. 
such as conferences, institutes, anniversary celebrations, or entertainment activities. All right, ready for step two, which is get your club qualified before April 1st, 2021. Your club president elect and president elect nominee must complete the Rotary International Learning Center Grants Management course and Rotary Foundation Basics course by February 28th, 2021. Your club's Rotary Foundation chair must complete the Rotary International Learning Center Grants Management course by February 28th, 2021. The club president-elect, president-elect nominee, and Rotary Foundation chair must complete the District 5150 Grants Management course by March 31st, 2021. If your club does not have a president-elect nominee, one of the following club officers must complete the required trainings by February 28th and March 31st, 2021, your international service chair, your community service chair, or your Rotary Foundation chair. The signatures of the president-elect and president-elect nominee are required on the Rotary Foundation Memorandum of Understanding and the District 5150 Memorandum of Understanding Addendum by April 1st, 2021. If the club does not have a president-elect nominee by April 1st, one of the chairs, International Service Chair, Community Service Chair, or Rotary Foundation Chair, who completed the Rotary Foundation's Grants Management and Rotary Foundation Basics courses and District 5150's Grants Management course may sign in lieu of the president-elect nominee. The club president-elect must enter goals into Rotary Club Central for the Rotary Foundation's annual fund no later than April 1st, 2021, and the club must be in good standing with Rotary International and District 5150 membership reporting, financial obligations and dues, as well as state and federal tax filing requirements by April 1st, 2021. So qualification requirements must be completed by the 2021-2022 Rotary year and the 2021-2022 club qualification requirements checklist must be submitted to your club's assistant governor by April 1st, 2021. All right, you, once your club is qualified, you are ready for step three, which is to work with your club or board of directors to determine DDF grant projects for your club in 2021-2022. A district grant application for 2021-2022 DDF must be submitted prior to June 1st, 2021. Now, where do you find that application again? You go to our Rotary website, click on About Rotary, scroll down to the Rotary Foundation, down to Rotary Grants, over to District Grants, and then to District Grants Overview, where you will find in blue, District 5150 Grant Application. So you click on that and you follow the directions to complete the application. You want to be sure to allow enough time to complete the application and secure the signatures of the 2020-2021 President-Elect, who's next year's president, and 2020-2021 president-elect nominee, next year's president-elect, before June 1st. And June 1st is the magic date for district grants. Your completed online applications are automatically emailed to me. And all applications must be received by June 1st, 2021. 
Some tips before you begin. First, review the application form. Be sure you have the information required to complete the application. What is the name of the project? How much will it cost? How many Rotarians will be involved? Will other people be involved? If your club applied for DDF funds last year, use a copy of last year's district grant application as a guide. And confirm with your 2021-2022 club president and president-elect that you have their approval of the project. Now let's take a look at an example of a district grant application, and I'm going to use Foster City's Yurok Nation Playground project as the example. So you fill in first the lead club name, Foster City. If other clubs were working with us on this project, we would list them in this box where it says multi-club project. But in this case, Foster City just does this project uh, themselves. The name of the project is Yurok Nation Playground Project. Briefly describe the project and what the project will do. Well, Foster City will remove an existing playground donated by the city of Foster City and install it at a playground site in Klamath, California, designated by the Yurok Nation Tribal Council. Interact students from San Mateo High School and members of the Rotary Club of Foster City will install the playground during spring break 2021. For the first time, children from the Yurok Nation who live close to the playground site will have a playground to enjoy. The start date is April 3rd, 2021, which is the beginning of spring break. And the estimated completion date is April 11th, the end of spring break. District grants require active involvement of Rotarians. So you need to list the number of Rotarians who will participate in this project. And in our case, we estimate about 15. Describe active participation by Rotarians, non-financial. Provide at least two examples of active participation. Well, Rotarians will remove the donated playground, will work with Yurok Nation Tribal Council members to designate a playground site in or near Klamath, California. Rotarians will transport Interact students to Klamath and will work with the Interact students to install the playground. The number of non-Rotarians that will benefit from this project, about 40. And who is the relevant community and how will the project improve their lives? First, we think Yurok Nation children and their parents will benefit from access to the playground. The children will enjoy access to and fun through daily exercise on the playground equipment and their parents will enjoy playing with their children at the playground. But we think there's a second community that benefits and that is San Mateo High School Interact students who will have a unique hands-on experience learning to use tools and equipment to install a playground. What are the expected long-term community impacts? Well, we think there are two communities. First, young and old Yurok Nation members will live healthier lives with easy access to the playground. And second, San Mateo High School Interact students will learn ways to help others and create memories that will influence them throughout their lives. Now, some clubs choose to use DDF as a dictionary project. And if that is your club's choice, then you would check, yes, this is a dictionary project. But in our case, it's not, so we check no. If it were a dictionary project, you would put down how many dictionaries would be distributed. Other clubs use district grants for RILA scholarships. If this were a RILA scholarship project, you would check yes. But in Foster City's case, it's no, it's a playground project. If it were a RILA scholarship project, then you would put how many students would be sponsored. Will the project address any of Rotary's seven areas of focus? If yes, which areas? We, uh, Foster City checks fighting disease. 
How will the project meet the goals of that area of focus? Well, Yurok Nation children will have healthy exercise options that can establish lifelong exercise habits. Describe how the general public will know that this is a Rotary sponsored project and provide examples. Well, articles about the play playground work will be featured in local newspapers in both Klamath and Foster City, and a wooden sign will be posted near the playground, thanking the Rotary Club of Foster City and San Mateo High School Interact Club. Is a cooperating organization involved in the project? Yes. The City of Foster City will donate the playground, and the Yurok Nation Tribal Council will designate a playground site. So how much is this project going to cost and where will the money come from? Well, first the income. District grant funds, DDF, are requested up to, in Foster City's case, $3,000. Now the club has more than $3,000 in DDF, but we are requesting up to 3,000 of that for this project. The club also has $1,000 of its own funds that it will use and San Mateo High School Interact Club fundraisers will raise another thousand. So that's a total of $5,000 in income. So expenditures. What are the expected expenditures and provide specific costs? Well, as best we know at the beginning of this project, there will be $2,000 for hotel rooms for 20 Interact students. Rotarians pay for their own hotel rooms. $500 for trailer rental to haul playground equipment, $500 to rent a ditch digger, $1,500 for paint, screws, and replacement parts, and $500 for food for lunches. That's as best as we know at the beginning of the project. So the total project expenditures are expected to be 5,000. So we have 5,000 in income and 5,000 in expenditures. And those two numbers have to match. If your club does not receive the entire amount of DDF requested, can your club fund the shortfall from its own funds? In Foster City's case, we say yes, we can. But what if we couldn't? If we didn't have enough money uh, to cover the cost, we would have to check no. And if we check no, then can the project be downsized? to meet the amount of district grant and club contributions to the project. And we would say, yes, we could. We could put in a smaller playground. We could take fewer Interact students. But in our case, we can cover the uh, amount if the entire amount of DDF is not available. So who are the contacts for this project? Well, the club's primary contact is Greg Cool, and he is the Yurok playground project leader. I have put in a, a false email address and false phone number for Greg, but you would of course put in the correct information for your club. Our club's secondary contact is Curtis Chen, who is next year's club president. And again, I put in a false, inform, a false, sec, a false email address and a false uh, phone number, but you would put in the correct information. And that's because these are the people that we contact if we have more questions about the project um, and then required authorization. President of the Rotary Club must affirm that the club or board has voted to undertake this project as an activity of the club. And so Curtis Chen is our 2021-2022 president and I've signed for Curtis. Um, for this. Now, if I, it, Curtis would need to send me an email authorizing me to sign on his behalf to make this official. And Shiraz Zak is our 2022-2023 president, president who is our 2021-2022 president-elect. And I've signed for her as well, and she would also have to send an email authorizing my signature. If your club does not have a 21-22 president-elect, then you can use your club's Rotary Foundation Chair, International Service Chair, or Community Service Chair. A new feature this year. Let's say you're working on your district grant application and you 
need a little bit more information before you can complete it. You click on save. And when you click on save, you'll receive an email that says you can edit and submit your application within 15 days. To access your application, you click on the private access URL, put in the passcode, and your form will pop back up. Now, when you finished your application and you're ready to go, you click on continue. When you click on continue, a completed district grant application will pop up for your final review. There will be an option for modify if changes need to be made and an option for confirm if no changes are required. It looks like this. Before you click on confirm, make a copy for your files. So when you've made all your modifications and changes and you're ready to click on confirm, print a copy first because when you click on confirm, you will receive an email that says your form was successfully submitted and you'll receive a reference number for your application. I, on the other hand, do receive the completed district grant application. So if for some reason you forgot to print a copy, then you can just email me or call me and I'll send you a copy. All right, now you're ready to implement your project, but you have to wait until your district grant application is approved before you can implement your project. Again, do not begin implementation of your project until you have received written notification from me that the application has been approved by District 5150 and the Rotary Foundation. If you begin before you receive written notification, you won't be able to use your DDF funds for the project. Notification usually occurs by mid-September. All right, and a reminder that your club must maintain a separate bank account for each district grant over 2,000. Since Foster City's pro, uh, district grant is for 3,000, we do maintain a separate bank account. All right, now you get to enjoy the club's project. Go to work and savor the good work your members will do to make a positive difference in the lives of so many who will benefit from your project. And then when the project's finished, you have one more step, step five, which is the final interim report, which is due by May 1st, 2022. And you find that uh, final report form on our District 5150 website under step five. And where do you find that again? You go back to our website, click on About Rotary, scroll down to the Rotary Foundation, down to Rotary Grants, over to District Grants, and finally District Grants Overview, where you'll go to step five. But before you begin filling out that final, final or interim report, review the form, use your club's District Grant application as a reference to complete the final or interim report. Be sure you have the information required to complete the final report. Do you have receipts? Do you know how many Rotarians were involved in the project and how many others were involved and what the final costs were? You also want to confirm your 2021-2022 club president's approval because they will need to sign the final or interim report. It's a good idea to complete the final report as soon as the project is finished. The final report can be submitted any time prior to May 1st, 2022. If your project covers more than one rotary year, which is July 1st to June 30th, you must file an interim report for the first year of the project by May 1st, 2022. All district grant projects must be completed by April 30th of the second rotary year of the project. So for example, let's say that COVID interrupted our Yurok 
nation playground project and we weren't able to get it finished by this year. We would file an interim report by May 1st, 2022, then finish the project uh, the following year and then submit a final report by May 1st, 2023. Congratulations, you have completed the District 5150 District Grants Training Module. Once your club is qualified, you can submit a district grant application to use your club's DDF for a district grant project that meets the needs of your local community or an international community. You might have questions though along the way, and, and if you do, if I can be of help, send me an email or give me a call and I will be glad to help. Another door has opened for another opportunity to do good work in the world. Go for it. <laughs>